Hey guys, what's up? It's Dan here. I have a video I I'm doing today uh, that will probably range from like maybe boring to mildly interesting, but if you are really into bike handlebars, it's probably worth checking out. So what I've noticed is I, I ride with a lot of people that have drop bars and I'll notice them like riding and uh, they start like taking their hands off and shaking them and complaining about wrist pain and you know back pain and all that. And I, and I ask them, well, like how often do you actually use your drops, like, like the hooks, the actual drop part of those drop bars? And more often than not, they tell me, no, I just use the hoods. And I, I think if you, if you just use the hoods on your handlebars, then maybe drop bars aren't the best solution for you. And I found this out a, a few years ago. Uh, at the time, you know, I thought I loved drop bars. Um, I think I was, it was like maybe a little Stockholm syndrome. Uh, since then though, I've decided uh, there, there's just so many great handlebars out there. It doesn't make sense to stick with something that's not uh, not perfect for you. So today we're going to look at the Albatross uh, handlebars from Nito. Um, you can get these from rivbike.com uh, or maybe your local bike shop uh, can get them ordered in for you. I think that the trick to Albatross bars is all in how you set them up. So I want to show you a little bit about how I do that. It's not the only way to do it, but I think this is a way that works really well if you're used to drop bars and you kind of like that that hoods position, this will get you something very similar um, with a few extra hand positions that I think you'll love. So seen from the top, uh, I have a 120 millimeter stem on my bars, which makes sure that I don't get too cramped and I have a good range forward and backwards that I can put my hands on. Also notice my brake levers are slid very far forward. Here's the end hand position, I can still reach the brakes. I have a mid hand position. I can then hook my fingers over the brake lever and use my pinky and ring. And I can, of course, get in an arrow position up in the front. Now, the question at this point is, are all these handlebar positions actually getting used? Do they really matter? And I wanted to find out. So I set out with a camera on my bike and I recorded each time I changed positions, uh, which uh, w was, a, was a big pain because it turns out I changed positions every uh, minute and eight seconds on average. And uh, I was also surprised to find out that the uh, the lever position, the one where I scoot up into sort of a uh, a hood type position and use my pinky and ring finger to brake, uh, I use that 62% uh, of the time on this ride. And then that was followed by the end position, the most upright position at 26%. So I think if I were to be on a more social ride with people, those numbers might be, be flipped around. But um, Still, it's pretty surprising that uh, there's such an equal split between these. I don't think that's what most people get out of their drop bars unless they're, you know, maybe racing. Uh, so this this suggests to me that this is really uh, a great setup for my style of riding. All right, guys, thanks for thanks for checking this video out. I hope you found it interesting or weird or a little of both. Um, and and in all seriousness, you know, I remember thinking uh, when I first started looking into these handlebars that I couldn't be a serious cyclist unless I had drop bars. It's just really not the case. And there's so many different styles out there. So give these a shot if you're having a hard time with your drops. I think you'll really like them.